We welcome back Megan Rademeyer to give part two of her presentation. Over to you, Megan. Um, Chris Gatti teaches at General Smats High School in Vereeniging, um, and he was very concerned about um, sort of bribery in the community and um, what um, and what his um, learners could do about it. Um, what was amazing about this project was Chris got his learners to sort of brainstorm, um, you know, what they can do about bribery and corruption. They developed a CD of resources, and they then had a, a meeting that they invited community members to, um, where they presented their their sort of findings and their resources. Um, what I loved about this project was we had never seen an issue like bribery brought into the open in quite the way that, that Chris and his learners um, did. You know, in the past we've seen many projects around HIV AIDS or orphans and vulnerable children or sort of sick puppies at the SPCA. But to take a topic like bribery and to actually bring it out into the open and to say, you know, my learners and I don't think this is acceptable and we're going to do something about it was was really something um, quite amazing. And so Chris's project was lovely um, from that point of view. Um, I think what other teachers can learn from Chris's project is that for a project to be truly successful, it needs to be um, highlighting an issue that you and your learners um, genuinely believe is important in your community. Um, and that's exactly what Chris did, and I think why his was a winning project. Um, this next project, which was also a winner in, in 2011, was submitted by a group of four teachers from the Free State. Um, you can see all, of, all four of them in the middle of the screen. Um, and part of the reason why I'm including this example um, is to draw teachers' attention to the fact that um, projects can be entered by a pair or a small group of, of teachers. The one thing that you must be aware of, though, is that um, if you do enter as a pair, um, you might have to split the prizes up amongst the, the group. So, for example, um, if your project is selected to go to the regional forum in Morocco, you may have to select one teacher to present your project. So that is a possible downside. Um, but in the past, we have made a plan to get other group members um, to, the, to the other forum. So, so please don't let that put you off either. Um, in this project, these four um, learners worked with a university in the United Kingdom that wanted to collect um, information about child-headed households and orphans and vulnerable children. Um, and what they did was they trained learners at the four schools these teachers were at to go into communities and to interview um, children who, who had become heads of households. Um, because they received um, training on how to do this, they conducted their research in a very ethical way. Um, they, they were sort of made sensitive um, to how one can go about um, sort of asking these sorts of questions. Um, so, so they did it um, you know, in a very ethical way and learned a lot about research techniques. But what was amazing was the, the quality of the feedback that these um, learners were able to get from other children um, was quite amazing. And I think of a far, um, uh, you know, it was a far more impressive body of research than adult researchers may have been able to elicit um, out, of, out of children. So that's why this project was, was so powerful. Um, this next project I'm not going to talk about. Um, Linda Bradfield has done a whole presentation on this project. And teachers who are watching the recordings of these webinars may want to view Linda's, um, Linda's recording, particularly if they um, are primary school teachers and want some inspiration about what can be done with very young children. Um, when you see what Linda and her six-year-olds were able to pull off, um, collecting more than seven tons of waste in just a few weeks, using the power of ICT and a really committed, dedicated teacher, um, you'll, you will be astounded and you will also be um, inspired as to um, what teachers can do, even working with very young children. Um, Peter Delisle's project has also been covered separately in a, in a whole webinar um, of its own. Um, so please do view Peter Delisle's webinar. Um, Peter's is an excellent example 
of how um, teachers have used um, sort of a range of different thinking skills um, to get learners to think critically um, about different biomes and how it would be to, to live in different um, environments. And Peter's is well worth a look at. Um, yes, it uses Adobe software and it uses um, Intel visual ranking thinking tools and it uses a, a Google Docs um, collaborative spreadsheet. But it's more the way in which those tools have been used that makes this project um, the success that it was. Um, just to quickly go through a few more um, examples. This is Klingiwe Mfeka, who was a winner um, also in 2010. Um, her project was done in a very poorly resourced school um, near Peter um, Maritzburg. Um, Oh, um, Caroline's leaving now. Not to worry if, if you need to leave, that's fine. I, I do realize that the um, my time is up, but I'm doing this now so that Fiona can um, make a recording. Um, can Giwe got her learners um, to think about what they could do in their community um, to make it a better place. Um, she sent learners out into the field to, to interview community members. Um, and then to think carefully around what they could do to make things better. And their solutions were then presented at a community meeting. Um, I think for teachers who think, oh, you know, it was easy for Linda Bradfield, um, who taught at um, St. John's, or it was easy for Peter DeLisle, to, um, who teaches at Hilton College, um, to come up with these fantastic projects because they've got access to um, such great resources. Um, but I can't do um, such an amazing thing with, with the resources at my school. I think Lingiwe's project is a great example um, of what can be done with very little in the way of resources, but with a teacher who was inspired and motivated and wanted to make a difference. And I think also um, teachers should be aware that there is this category called innovation in challenging contexts. Um, and if, like Lengiwe, you are doing amazing things with the few resources that you do have access to, um, you would definitely be a, a candidate for this, um, for this category and should really consider entering your project. Um, this is Cheryl Douglas, um, another winner from 2010. Um, she um, won the Innovation and Collaboration category and she really got her learners to think about um, sort of global issues um, that were affecting their community and how they could do something um, towards solving them. As her inspiration, um, Cheryl used this book um, called 20 Global Problems in 20 Years to Solve Them. And she got her learners to think about how they could do something about this, these 20 global problems within their school community um, to make their um, community a better place. And I think this is a great example of taking something that's much bigger than your school or much bigger than your community and thinking if you bring it down to, to the basic level of things that you do have some control over, what can you do um, and how can you implement them? And that's what Cheryl did. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about Fiona's project because I'm sure Fiona will um, do a whole um, webinar on it at, at some stage. But Fiona's um, blonding, uh, Bonding Through Blogging um, project remains one of my all-time favorites. If you see um, these photos of these primary school aged learners teaching the old folk from the old age home across the road from the school how to um, sort of set up a blog, um, and you think what a, what a wonderful example of, of different um, ages and different generations being able to learn from one another. Um, and the, the learners were, were really doing these blogs for a genuine audience and for a genuine purpose. And at the same time, you know, these old folk love them and love getting to come to the school and to meet and chat to the, to the young people. So it really did um, do something worthwhile. Um, that's another great, great project. Um, Ray Chachiano was another winner in, in 2010. Um, Ray was a visual arts um, teacher, and she found that there were very few resources um, aimed at, um, at the visual arts curriculum. 
and especially there was a, a dire shortage of great South African um, visual arts resources that one could find online. So what her learners did to overcome this project, uh, problem was they set up a virtual art gallery um, that one can access online or, or through a CD that um, Ray and her learners produced and they could almost go into different rooms um, of this virtual art gallery and meet um, sort of different artists, see um, interviews, um, see people um, sort of working in their studios and, and doing things and what a way of, of bringing art to life um, for her learners who often saw um, old girls from Ray's school who have now gone on to be successful artists in different realms sort of doing their thing but also in terms of creating a great resource that other visual arts teachers could also use in their classrooms. Um, I think this is the last project I've got to talk about um, and this was um, a, another great project from 2010 where um, Nikki Hayes, a teacher from um, Victoria Girls in Grahamstown, got her learners to um, create a video to support a community organization that, that had some um, meaning um, to those girls. So um, some learners um, chose to make a video about the child welfare organization in the town, others chose to make a video on the SPCA, and they really had to get to know um, what these community organizations were all about in order to create a successful video. And these videos have now been shared um, and, this, and the organizations themselves have been able to distribute them and, and use them as part of their promotional materials. So again, using ICT to do something really um, worthwhile and meaningful within a, um, within a community. Oh, it wasn't the last one. Oh, see, this is really the last one. Um, this was Charlie Wiggle's project from 2010. Um, he teaches um, middle school age children, so 10 to 12 year olds, um, who are often called tweenies because they, they're not quite children, but they're not quite teenagers yet. Um, and he got his learners to develop um, a sort of website in which they reviewed and promoted um, different organizations and establishments um, that would um, that would appeal to other tweens who were coming to Durban um, to watch the 2010 World Cup um, soccer. Um, they, um, if you see in the the photo, the the child who looks like a chef and the child who looks like a journalist, they went to you know to different restaurants in Durban and said we're here to conduct a review on your restaurants. We want to see if other tweens will like it. Um, in many cases, they got themselves a, a free meal at these restaurants, and they then um, wrote an online review, um, sort of either promoting the restaurant, saying what other tweens would like about it, or saying that this is an establishment that tweens um, wouldn't enjoy. So creating a, a great resource for a genuine purpose that has been shared, um, that has been shared. Um, that's it in terms of um, my examples. But what I want teachers to do now is to think, are you already doing something that you can enter? We've already talked about the fact that this year's closing date is so soon. But if you've got a project that you ran last year that you want to enter this year, you're welcome to do that. Or if you've started a project and can demonstrate that you've done some activities already and have got some more activities planned, you're welcome to enter that too. Also, maybe you've done a simple lesson and now you can, um, you've, from having seen these examples, you've perhaps thought about ways um, that you could grow that simple lesson into a bigger project. And I really would encourage you to give it a whirl. You, you don't know what you've got until you've, um, until you've tried. You've got nothing to lose from um, entering, but if you don't enter, you definitely have no chance of winning. So um, that's it from me. Um, please do um, consider entering. If you have any questions, you're welcome to ask Fiona or you're welcome to send an email to me. My email address is at the bottom of the screen um, and I will do my best to, to help you with your project. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much, Megan, for sharing all those ideas. Good night, everyone.